The helmet is a material manifestation of mankind's ingenuity, seeking to save his own life from his fellow man cracking his cranium open. As tactics, technology, weapons, and strategy have changed, so have helmets. And ancient Rome is a great example. The earliest helmets used by the ancient Romans would have been the so-called Italian pot type, used throughout central Italy during Rome's early years. Because warfare during this period would have consisted of extremely mobile warrior bands, unobstructed vision and communication would have been of utmost importance, which these rudimentary helmets allowed for, especially in ambush and counterattack skirmishes and raids. As population and army sizes drastically grew, battles were increasingly fought between densely packed groups of warriors opposing each other. By the 3rd century BC, the Romans had added cheek pieces to a simple style bronze pot helmet historians call Montefortino. Variants of this mass-produced helmet would have been used throughout the Roman Republic and during Rome's wars with the Carthaginian Empire. Around 50 BC, the coolest type helmet came into use, distinguished from the Montefortino by the addition of a large flat neck guard, which allowed the legionnaire some neck protection if flinching away from a direct strike to the face. The Gaelic style cheek pieces added further strength and a cutout for the ear, enabling better hearing of commands, and the added peak or visor gave protection from downward cuts. The coolest helmet was in use for 150 years, and would have been the primary helmet worn by Julius Caesar's legions. After the Gaelic Wars in modern day France, the Roman Empire set up manufactorums there that produced imperial Gallic helmets that replaced the earlier Colas pattern helmet. They showed considerable influence from the Aegean helmet worn by Gaelic chiefs. These were the first iron helmets mass produced for the Roman legionaries. In addition to the Gaelic style cheek pieces which had already been added in the Colas pattern, Eyebrow ridges were added for extra strength, a slightly more substantial peak, the backplate also increased in size and downward slope. Ear guards were also added. The implementation of the Imperial Gallic was closely followed by the Imperial Italic in the 1st century AD, and both were used throughout that century until the Italic replaced the Gallic and was used until the 3rd century. The Italic again increased the girth of the visor and the neck guard again became larger and more sloped. Both helmets adopted a pair of crossbars affixed over the dome after the Dacian Wars, where the Romans faced a foe wielding a large curved two-handed sword that could pierce the Roman helm with a direct strike. These bars prevented that, and would adorn the Roman helmets for a century after the Romans had massacred the Dacian race. As the Roman Empire descended into a cavalcade of endless civil war and economic crisis, the production of simplified, easy-to-produce cheaper helmets became increasingly common and gradually replaced the Imperial Italic. Later helmets began to show little or no resemblance to the Imperial Helmet, and increasingly showed Germanic and Persian influences. This has been Epimetheus, and if you enjoyed this video, I think you may also enjoy a video I did on the Roman Pilum, or the early kings of Rome. Huge thanks to those who helped me support the cost of this one-man operation, writing, drawing, editing, researching, and narrating on Patreon. And now you can also support this channel on Teespring where you can buy a stylish shirt that I designed and I get a cut. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And comment which, which of these helmets did you like the best in this video? Which one looked the coolest? Which one would you uh, like to wear in battle?